me, ask me to talk to you, or I, I'm to, uh, how quickly can I be there? When can I be there? How can I work with you guys? And so I'm honored to be here today. I'm also honored to work with your teachers, Mrs. Farley, Mr. Tobin, Mr. Sheridan. Uh, they're friends of mine, and I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you today. So thank you very much for having me here today. So Mr. Farley talked a lot about that. Um, we're finishing our first decade. The first slam for uh, FAST for nonviolence was in 2008. And uh, this will be our 10th this year when we come to it in 2007. And so I want to kind of look back at it, talk about our history together, and then challenge you. Uh, you may choose to put a new coat of paint on it. Or you may choose, because if you're a senior, you are the 10th class. If you're a junior, you're the 11th class. And if you're a sophomore, you're the 12th class to go through this. And so I'm going to ask you to begin to think about it, whether you want to put a new coat of paint or re-envision it and, and create it anew. So, so this is where I'm starting off with you today. So I'm starting off with this question, is how do you change the world? How do you right wrongs, correct injustices, or leave the world just a little bit better than the one you, f you found? That's a tough question. And to be on, and we're, if you're so honored to have the chance to have a chance to try and change the world, this is the, the challenge I put before you, and I have a theory for how we do change the world. This is called a, th a theory of action is a set of beliefs or a strategy on how you change things. And so this is the theory of action that I think we put into place. This comes from the anthropologist Margaret Mead. And she said, and, and forgive me, I'm going to turn around and read this to you. It says, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And for my money, that really means that change begins with a small group of committed people and a really good idea, a spark. And I think about building a fire where you get some fluff and some shreds of paper and you add a spark to it and you get this tiny little fire. And that's what we had in 2008. And then you add twigs to it. And then you add sticks to it. And then you add branches to it. And then you add logs to it. Before you know it, you have a group of coals and you have something that can burn on and on and on and on. And I believe that's where change starts. Change starts in rooms like this one. Or change starts in rooms like we were 10 years ago, which was, this was not built 10 years ago. We were in a, we were in a very cavernous, old, dusty building in the CTE buildings across the way with ceiling tiles that were fall broken and broken windows and plastic on things. And this is where this idea took shape and this is where we began. So we're going to tell you, your, start with your history and then we're going to move on to a challenge for you. So this is San Leandro High School 10 years ago. The picture on the right is of what was a riot on campus. We had hundreds of students, and, and Mrs. Farley, Mr. Tobin, Mr. Farley, I think th these seem so long ago, right? But this is a, uh, uh, we can pick out your old principal in the picture. Uh, you can see Mrs. Furtado there uh, on, on, in the left-hand side of the screen. And this, uh, what happened was there were gang fights, there were race fights, there were hundreds fighting each other on this campus. The, the fights were so bad, it made Bay Area news. All the police on this, in San Leandro were mobilized to come to this campus to try and quell uh, the violence. And what was going on was, was, was scaring the people in the city, scaring the people in the school district. And so we wrote a grant for nonviolence. Uh, I wrote it with Mrs. Furtado and others, and we were fortunate enough to win, and we began work on it in 2007 
to, uh, and below that, there was a tension on this campus. I, I don't know whether I can describe it as well as it is, but you can feel there was a palpable tension on this campus of kids. Just you'd bump into each other, and there were fights. There, were, there was hostility. There was, there was, it was a very different place than it feels right now in this room with you. So let me just say that. Next. So this is our inspiration, and I want to spend a couple minutes on our inspiration. The lady on the right, her name is Julie Chavez Rodriguez, and Julie was coming to work with us here at SLAM in those cavernous classrooms across the way. And the inspiration is really on the left, which is her grandfather, Cesar Chavez. I'm going to point out some things to you. This picture, and this is to a media academy, pictures have value. Uh, this is 1968, March of 1968. Cesar Chavez, uh, in 68, the farm workers' movement, there was violence in the farm workers' movement. There was violence against the farm workers. They were striking for better farm worker pay. And the farm workers were talking about retaliation. And Cesar Chavez knew there could be no retaliation. He believed deeply in peace and nonviolence as a way of social change. And so for a, as a strategy to purify the movement, Cesar Chavez in 2000, uh, excuse me, in 1968, fasted for 24 straight days. That's no food for 24 straight days. He drank water. This is the moment where he breaks the fast. That's Cesar on the right. Now, this is in Delano, California. And as you can see, he is, it is a warm, sunny day, but his, he, is so, he is wearing heavy clothing because his body is unable to generate heat. His first food after 24 days, and frankly, I'd like a big sandwich after 24 days, was a communion wafer. And the person giving him that communion wafer is... Bobby Kennedy, uh, Robert Kennedy, uh, who was a se running for president at that time. This is March of 1968, and he was assassinated about three months later in Los Angeles. And so Bobby Ken and that's Helen Chavez, uh, Susser's uh, wife uh, on the left there. And this is the moment where he is officially breaking the fast after 24 days. This was the inspiration, and so we were looking at the 40th anniversary of this fast, and we used it as the inspiration for SLAM. And so, next slide, please. Rather than having you guys fast 24 days, we had 24 people all fast one day in a chain. And each of those people in 2008 made a piece of media, each individual made media, and, um, and they each fasted for a day of peace for their cause. Okay, uh, and so over five weeks, and, and, and Mr. Farley and Mr. Hargrave, they stayed after school for five days. We had a breaking of bread ceremony each day where the incoming faster would feed the outgoing faster, and it was, it was a brand new thing. So next slide, please. So I want to kind of engage you in a little conversation right now. So I want you to talk to the person next to you for about two, three minutes. Because I want to know what's, what you think is the difference between a fast, a hunger fast, and a hunger strike. They're very different things. And so I'd like you to talk to each other for about two, three minutes, and we'll get kind of you guys to talk back to me a little bit and tell me what you think. What is the difference between a hunger strike and a hunger fast? And what is the difference between those two? Why don't you guys talk for two, three minutes, and we're going to talk about what they did and what Cesar Chavez did in, in 68 and 2008.
You guys ready? So what's the difference between just a hand, a hand between a hunger strike and hunger fast? Yes, sir. You, sir. Yes. Okay, you're on the track. He said that strikes lead to violence, but fast doesn't. But that's not quite it. Yes. You're on the right track here, but not quite there yet. Anybody else? This is important. If you guys are going to fast, you ought to know what you're doing, right? Yes, sir. I think we're circling it. We're getting closer. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think you've got it. Okay. I think you've got it. If we can go back to this, if we can go back to the slide, I want to talk to about a strike, a hunger strike is political. You're trying to change others. You're trying to look outside of yourself. You're trying to change what other people are saying. A hunger fast is internal. It's about self-purification. It's about looking at ourselves. Cesar Chavez was trying to purify the farm workers' movement. The farm workers' movement was talking about retaliation in 68. And so it's a, new, it's a different theory of action. There's a theory of action that if you want to change the world, you go out by changing others. But this theory of action says if you want to go to change the world, the first thing you have to do is change yourself. And that's what Cesar Chavez did. He literally said, I am willing to die. I'm willing to go without food. I'm willing to die in order to make sure that our movement is nonviolence and that we all pledge ourselves against nonviolence. That's what he did. Later on in his life, Cesar Chavez fasted for 35 days for a different cause, a pesticides in the field. And, and part, of, part of the reason why he died so early was because it's theorized that he did uh, organ damage to himself during this time, and, and he, he damaged himself. Uh, so this, he literally did die for the cause. So, so our next slide, we're going to tell your history very quickly. In 2008, we were mourning the deaths of fellow San Leandro High School students. Uh, your principal was putting up trees on this campus, and if you go into uh, the quad area, the open area uh, by the horseshoe uh, buildings, A, B, and C, there are trees that memorialize students over there. And four of the trees are in honor. Uh, the upper left is Dominique Hooper Brown. Uh, that's uh, Melissa Jackson. They were gunned down. Niancy Gonzalez was gunned, I believe, over at Palma Plaza, right across the street, and right across the street on her way to school. And Greg Ballard was uh, gunned down in 2008 after a football game. And I remember your principal talking to me and saying about her incredible fear that we would have a grove of trees in honor of students here on this campus. We had to stop the violence. So part of the videos were memorializing the students who had been murdered on this campus. Next. SLAM students also talked about their, their heroes for peace, whether it be Gandhi or Stephen Biko or Martin Luther King or other political movements. So what they did is they talked about their heroes of peace. And, and I believe, uh, Mr. Farley, I think you created this, uh, the pictures, that, those are the students in, in the pictures with uh, uh, the historical pictures. My favorite is the King with uh, 
uh, the, the Martin Luther King picture there. Uh, with o Osmond, was it Osmond? Osmond there, yes. Okay, yeah. So looking at Dr. King. Next, please. And uh, the, the picture in the middle is that first group of 24 students over that five-week period. On the right, yeah, let's give them a hand. That's them on the right getting certificates from Julie Rodriguez, and that's Julie Rodriguez uh, doing a presentation over in your library there where we had a press conference about what we had done. That's where it all started. And, and to be honest with you, it was hard. It was difficult. We didn't know really what we were doing. And the next year I came back, I thought, I don't know whether it was a one-year gig or whether they want to do it again. So the next year I came back, and... And I said, who of you wants to do the fast for nonviolence? Every hand in SLAM went up. There were about 50 hands that went up. The entire junior and senior class said, every hand went up, go, we want to do this. And I, and I was shocked. I was stunned. And we planned a fast that would go for 10 weeks long. It just about killed Mr. Farley and Mr. Hargrave back then because they had to stay late for 10 straight weeks. And, the, um, and we, plan, we planned the fast would go from Martin Luther King Day to Cesar Chavez Day. And Mr. Farley, Mr. Hargrave said to me, why are you just picking on us? And he goes, why don't you get other groups involved? So I went from group to group and class to class on this campus, and we got 10 groups to parallel the 10 weeks of what SLAM was doing, and that's where the season of service was born. The season of service was built off of the success of the SLAM Fast for Nonviolence. And it was created off of you. And so that we recruited 10 weeks, and uh, we recruited 10 classes, 10 weeks, and we went, from, um, we went from Martin Luther King Day to Cesar Chavez Day, and our movement was born. I'm not going to go into the long history of this because I'm not going to do 10 years of history for you. But 2009 was our first season of service. Those wonderful graphics posters that you've seen around this campus, uh, they started in 2010. Uh, we were included in the ASB assembly in 2011. And you're going to see the actual video. And the video was so good and so changing from, that, from assembly that in 2012, we were given our own assembly here in this theater where we did four, six different assemblies that first year. Four in here and two over at Korematsu. Uh, we also, uh, you guys started doing journalism in 2011. We won a character education award for the season of service in 2011. I forgot to put this, and 2012. The first one was for the season. The second one was for the slam fast for nonviolence. Uh, faculty messages were added in 2012. John Murat was added in 2013. We started an evening event in 2014. Other schools were involved in 2015, whether they be Bancroft and Jefferson Elementary. Uh, outside sponsorship came in 2015, and then I began to hand it off then, and then last year it was completely handed off. Ms. Livson coordinates it on this campus right now, and I'm so proud. Last year, the season of service, period of peace, there were about 24 different groups involved, over 1,500 students, and it started with 24 SLAM students in 2008. It's... It started with you. So what? So what? What does that have to do with you? You know, history can be a gift and it can be a burden. And so I realize this is what's happened in the past, but I'm here today to say, where do you want to take it? What do you want to do with it? What do you want to change? What new injustices do you want to solve? You have to add your own touch. You have to take it and make it your own, or else it dies. So, so I'm here to challenge you and ask you today to, to either rethink it 
or recreate our own image. Uh, I just I, there was some I wrote these things this morning, and I, there's a couple things I really liked here. Excuse me. So I really want to ask you what your legacy will be. What's worth your inspiration? What's worth your time? What's worth your effort? And what's worth your creativity? What issues do you care about? Okay. And so the next, next slide, please. I figure this might be on your mind today. Okay. Okay. We live, we live in a deeply divided country but we are not each other's enemies. The political system was created so we can resolve differences, but we always need to remember that these differences are between neighbors and friends. We are one country, we are one nation, and because of this, we, we, we need to figure out a way to come together. This is actually, I've heard more commentary of what happens tomorrow than what's happening today. Because we have to bring this country together and I'm calling on upon you to figure out new ways to bring this country together. Our political disagreements are fueled by our strength, which is our diversity. Diversity in a gene pool keeps it alive. Diversity amongst our peoples in this country gives us creativity, gives us inspiration, gives us new thinking, gives us new ideas. But with that, there are differences in socioeconomics, differences in race, differences in religion, differences in culture. You have to figure out ways to bring us together so we can be one people, one nation together. And of course, there is plenty of violence. Violence has its ultimate expression in war. Uh, the, the, the image on the upper left, I'm sure you've seen, is the Aleppo boy. Uh, the image on the upper right, I think those of us with a little gray hair remember as being Vietnam. This very day, we're fighting ISIS. And of course, we still have the, uh, the plague of gangs. There is no shortage of carnage in this world that we need to still deal with. But what I love about your work, and I've always loved about your work, is that you focus on the beginnings of violence, the seeds of violence. You've, you've done videos on abuse, prejudice, racism, homophobia, Intolerance, indifference, hatred. Your videos over the years have made a tremendous difference. They've educated minds and they've touched hearts. Next. So I'm asking you today to have a vision. I'm asking you today to dream of a better world. I'm here today to tell you to create a new future. I'm here today to ask you to lead. And leadership, I believe, starts by looking internally, by challenging yourself first to be more tolerant, more accepting, more peaceful, more loving. Cesar Chavez had it right. Change starts within ourselves. Beyond that, leadership is extending yourself to others. Your documentation of other people's service dignifies them, gives them additional voice, and honors their participation. I realize when you've done these projects, the journalism pieces, and recording the other season of service projects, that this is difficult for you, but it makes a tremendous difference. Not to mention your faculty videos, your composite videos, the assemblies that we've had throughout the years have all been, the videos have all been created by SLAM. To be quite honest, 
We couldn't have done it without you. Finally, the tools that you've been given in the media are a gift. You know, it began, I think, centuries around, ago around campfires when people would tell stories. And then it, it advanced itself to people yelling on rocks, quill pens with people etching out ideas deep into the night uh, by the can by, only by candlelight. Then came movable type. Then came the typewriter. Then came the, the, the camera. Then came the keyboard and computers. But get the, but let's make this really clear between the two of us. It all begins with good stories. You're the chroniclers. You're the storytellers. It begins with a good idea and a good expression of the idea. That is your gift. You're, you are our modern day storytellers and I challenge you to tell the stories. So have something to say and say it well. So how do, you sp how do you change the world? The group on the left were our kindling. They got our fire going. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtfully committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. I agree. And, I, and the picture at the right is a mirror because that's for you to look at yourself. I'm not here, I'm not here to guilt you. I'm here to give you my love. I deeply cherish these opportunities to talk to you guys. It started in that barn across the way. I, I'm, begging, I'm begging you guys to take it to its next level. So thank you very much. It's an honor and pleasure uh, for me to be here today. I love you very much, Slam. Thank you, Mr. Farley, Mrs. Farley, Mr. Sheridan, Mr. Tobin. Thank you.